On our clock of the Earth's history, it's less than two seconds to midnight. 74,000 years ago, the Indonesian supervolcano Toba erupted. Our ancient ancestors were faced with a terrifying threat. Volcanoes are one of the most powerful forces on the planet. They can devastate whole regions and even affect global climate. This is Mount Augustine off the coast of Alaska. It's not a supervolcano, but it does illustrate the raw power of even a fairly small eruption. It last blew in 2006. Volcanologist John Power is monitoring how it's changed since then. We're on our way to Augustine Volcano. It's one of the most active volcanoes in the Cook Inlet region. During the last eruption here, Augustine blasted out 65 million cubic meters of rock. So much debris that the summit grew by around 70 meters. The eruption here was big, though it was nothing compared to the power that could be unleashed by a supervolcano. But studying smaller eruptions like Augustine gives scientists an insight into the incredible power of the Toba eruption 74,000 years ago. We're sitting on Augustine Island, which is uh, the home of Augustine Volcano, which you see behind us. We are at the very northern end of what's called the Ring of Fire. The Ring of Fire is the chain of volcanoes that surrounds the Pacific Ocean. It's the world's most volcanically active region. Mount Toba lies in Indonesia at its western edge. Here at many of these volcanoes in the Ring of Fire, you have very explosive types of eruptions, very powerful things that throw ash and so on out in very high uh, elevation in the atmosphere. There's no place where things are as quite as active as Indonesia. Indonesian volcanoes have produced some of the most violent explosions on the planet. The Toba eruption was the biggest on Earth for two million years. The forces are, are quite extreme during one of these large explosive volcanic eruptions. You have magma that's coming up underneath the volcano. Inside that magma you have a lot of gas and so on that's absorbed inside the magma itself. And it's really this gas pressure that is driving a lot of the eruption. An average volcano might contain enough gas and magma for the eruption to last for hours. Toba must have erupted for days. But while such eruptions are rare, disturbingly, the volcanoes that cause them aren't. 47 supervolcano sites have been discovered worldwide. Many are no longer active, but a few are, and they pose a real threat to human society. The most famous one of all lies in the United States. Yellowstone. This bizarre landscape attracts over three million visitors every year. They come here to witness the raw power of the park's famous geysers. Yellowstone has the largest collection of such hydrothermal features anywhere on Earth. Two-thirds of the world's geysers are in this one park. 
that takes a lot of heat. In fact, it takes a super volcano like Toba, only hidden below ground. The last super eruption here was 640,000 years ago, long before humans ruled the planet. But even after all this time, you can still see evidence of this ancient blast. And the volcano itself remains active. One day, it will erupt again. For geophysicists like Bob Smith, Yellowstone is a vital research centre. For decades, Smith has been studying the Yellowstone caldera, the giant volcanic crater in the centre of the park. His work reveals just how devastating the eruption of Toba would have been. We're standing here on the east side of Yellowstone Lake, and this sharp hill in front of us is actually the caldera boundary. And the caldera essentially occupies this entire expanse of the landscape that we can see. This whole system exploded out during the last giant eruption. This is a giant caldera, probably one of the biggest in the world that's known, and this is active. The sheer size of the Yellowstone system makes it a key location for the study of the ancient Toba super eruption. The Yellowstone caldera compares to Toba roughly in the same dimensions uh, of about 60 kilometers by 40 kilometers. Toba has a large lake occupying the caldera as Yellowstone Lake, so it's very similar in size. These hills and rocks were sculpted by immense forces. The whole landscape has been shaped by the giant volcanic furnace below. the magma chamber. This is the zone where molten rock gathers under immense pressure deep below the caldera. The bigger the magma chamber, the deadlier the eruption. Smith's work here at Yellowstone shows Toba's magma chamber would have been huge. This is his laboratory. We're here at a site on the east side of the caldera where we have a seismograph which records ground motions that relate to the vibrations of the earth when we have the passage of seismic waves. So we record two to three thousand earthquakes a year here. By mapping his seismic data, Bob can estimate the size of the magma chamber. His results are stunning. This simulation shows the whole United States. Yellowstone Park lies near the middle, its boundary marked in green. Yellowstone Lake is marked in blue, the edge of the volcanic caldera in red. Bob's seismic data plotted below the surface shows the enormous size of the magma system beneath the caldera. Yellowstone's magma chamber is an astounding 16 miles wide, 31 miles long and 5 miles deep. That's 500 times the size of the city of London. That's an awful lot of magma. Scientists now believe that Toba's magma chamber was roughly the same size. And the scary thing is that if that amount of magma erupted again, it would be absolutely devastating. And the aftermath would affect us all. But the problem wouldn't be the red-hot magma. The real killer would be volcanic ash. When the magma actually finally makes it to the surface, the gas pressure will drive that magma, fracture it, pulverize it into what a volcanologist would call ash. 
This is pulverized rock and, and minerals all ground up together by the explosive forces. And that stuff can be thrown out into the uh, atmosphere to a great altitude. It's thought that Toba's eruption column reached the very edge of space. This footage from the space shuttle of the Russian volcano Mount Klushevskoy erupting shows how high ash can be blasted into the atmosphere. But at Toba 74,000 years ago, this was just the beginning. As all those gases and, and pulverized rock rise up, it's hot, very hot, about 1,100 degrees centigrade. When it comes out, it'll rise up first buoyantly under its own heat. And as it begins to cool, it will become too heavy for the atmosphere to support. And it will rush back down the sides of the volcano. This creates a very hazardous phenomenon that we refer to as a pyroclastic flow. These superheated ash flows can be immense. At Toba, they buried the landscape up to 200 meters deep. Any humans nearby would have been annihilated. But even those outside this initial danger zone weren't safe. Toba's volcanic ash traveled for thousands of miles. There was a massive uh, release of ash, and that ash went northwest in the Indian Ocean and covered India. Twelve and a half million square miles of the Earth's surface were covered in ash. Anyone living in the fallout faced starvation. The Toba ash fall would have affected the vegetation in a big way in India. And the immediate effect of that would be that uh, the game that humans relied on didn't have any vegetation to eat. And then, of course, the, the human predators, being at the top of the chain, suffer much more. The ash was deadly. But volcanoes have an even deadlier weapon in their arsenal. The gas, sulfur dioxide. Toba may have released as much as three billion tons of it. Volcanologist Bill Maguire has studied how sulfur dioxide can affect the entire planet. When sulfur dioxide gets into the atmosphere, which it does with a big volcanic eruption, it combines with water vapour and it forms a fine mist of sulfuric acid. Billions of these tiny little sulfuric acid droplets in the atmosphere they act like tiny mirrors, so they reflect solar radiation back into space. The result? The planet cools down and enters a volcanic winter. There's some debate about how much of a temperature fall Toba actually led to, um, but in the extreme case, it could have reduced global temperatures by five to six degrees centigrade for a period of several years. And that would have literally caused most of the world's vegetation to die off. The effects of another super eruption today hardly bear thinking about. Starvation would wipe out huge numbers of people. If we saw a super eruption today that resulted in that same temperature drop, then we would experience global harvest failure. Now, I can't see any way that that can that cannot result in billions of deaths. If another of Earth's active supervolcanoes does what Toba did 74,000 years ago, it would be a disaster for us all. Well, super eruptions, on average, seem to occur about every 50,000 years or so. But of course, the Earth doesn't operate to a timetable. So when the next one's going to occur, we really haven't a clue. The 
The Toba supervolcano affected vast numbers of people in India. But 70,000 years ago, the survivors faced a new threat, this time one that would affect the whole planet. A global big freeze.